Football is a 20th century technological struggle. And what I see was this whole raft of people a setting on these two banks and looking at one another across this pretty little green cow pasture. Football has hitting, clipping, spearing, blocking, punching, late hitting, unnecessary roughness, and personal fouls. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to Stanley County Monday Night Football. Charles Curcio, Stanley News and Press, Brian Carter. Carter Video Services here tonight at Albemarle's Football Stadium as the Bulldogs host the West Stanley Colts in the 51st game, I believe it is, between the two schools. We see West Stanley warming up behind us, 0-1 on the season. Took a tough loss last week, 61-19 to Northwest Cabarrus. Did get uh, two rushing touchdowns and a passing touchdown from quarterback number 12, Bailey Baker, to number two. Jaquan Ingram. West Stanley, very big up front, going to try to run a similar offense to what they did last year with Cameron Brown and Malik Jackson. But uh, those were they had some very tough losses in the offseason in terms of who graduated, including those two, plus Connor Edwards, plus several other seniors. So this is a team kind of looking for looking for itself right now at this point. And then we see Albemarle warming up. Well, Albemarle ended a five-game losing streak and a three-game overall losing streak to Thomasville last week, 13-6. to The Bulldogs got two rushing touchdowns from number 21, Isaiah Harrison. That was the difference in the ballgame and had two fourth, uh, excuse me, second half goal line stands against Thomasville as well. Very impressive start for Albemarle this season. We will see them. Quarterback is number 10, of course, Minari and Hall. They will run a lot of option. They will run a lot of uh, zone read type of offense as well. It's a very interesting matchup between two very young teams. We'll be back with the coaches on the pregame show on Stanley County, Monday Night Football, week two. We're here on the pregame show on Stanley County, Monday Night Football with Albemarle head coach Richard Davis. Coach, congratulations on winning against Thomasville. Talk a little bit about that game and just kind of what you saw out there from your team. Well, I just saw a lot of will and heart from my team there at the end. You know, it, it could have went either way as the game went along, but our kids willed, our, willed ourselves a victory. Talk a little bit about this matchup tonight with West Stanley. What what have you sort of prepared for to go up against the Colts? Well, you know, they're, they're a young team, but they got a lot of athletes and you know, home run makers, you know, so we got to make sure we eliminate the big plays and fix some of the mistakes that we made last week or else we could be in trouble tonight. What would you say are some of the things that you worked on in practice this week specifically? A lot of little things, especially with special teams. And I think we could do a much better job with our special teams than we did last week. So that's been our main focus and just fixing little things for us, blocking scheme, little technique stuff, things of that nature. How do you feel like size-wise and speed-wise um, Albemarle matches up with West Stanley? Well, honestly, I think we're pretty even. We're about the same size-wise, and they got kids that can run, and I feel like we got a few kids that can run as well. So I'm looking forward to having a great game out here tonight. What do you think the keys are a victory tonight for Albemarle? We got to execute. We got to execute and take care of the football, and hopefully we'll force them to turn it over a few times. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it very much. We'll be back with West Stanley head coach Brett Morton. Back here on the pregame show on Stanley County Monday Night Football with West Stanley head coach Brett Morton. Coach, let's talk a little bit about last week. What were some of the positives that you took away from your game against Northwest Cabarrus? I thought at times we moved the ball pretty well. Um, Jordan Poole and finding him, you know, as a freshman, mm -hmm. he had 125 yards rushing and two touchdowns. That was a pleasant surprise. I mean, I know he's good, but to come out in the first game and be able to do that, that was pretty awesome. Uh, but uh, defensively, we did settle in in late in the second quarter in the third quarter. Um, Lucas Scott really did a great job. Um, I mean, he had 10 tackles, yeah. sack, pick, tackle for loss. So, I mean, that's, that's a great defensive game. Um, but, uh, you know, I thought we fought hard in the third quarter. Uh, we made too many mistakes. So, you know, that's what we focused on correcting this week. Yeah, I was going to talk about your preparations a little bit this week with Albemarle. How do you see this matchup going between the two schools? 
it should be a hard fought game. I mean, they're riding high. They beat Thomasville. I know they've been rivals for a long time, so they're going to be ready to come in against us, and uh, it's going to be our job to take the wind out of their sails, and that's that's what we're going to try to do right from the start. We had talked about you, two young school, you know, two young teams, two young first-year coaches. Kind of a it, it sort of almost evens the playing field a little bit. It, it seems like this is a very even matchup. Yeah, I I agree. Um, again, I don't you know I don't see a bad football team on film. Uh, I see a team that um, they they seem to really be rallying behind their scheme and what their head coach has them doing. So it's going to be tough. I mean, it should be a great football game. What are the keys to a victory tonight for West? Don't turn the ball over. Run the ball well. Tackle well. Thank you very much, Coach. Best of luck tonight. Thank you. We'll be back with a kickoff on Stanley County Monday Night Football. Albemarle West, always fun. Once again, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Stanley County Monday Night Football. Charles Curcio, Stanley Lewis Press, alongside Brian Carter, Carter Video Services. We are here tonight at Apple Malls Football Stadium as the Bulldogs take on the West Stanley Colts. This is, well, Brian, this is 16 years we've been watching these two teams go at it. Terrific matchup tonight, two very young teams, first-year head coaches. I think it's going to be... A question I think you can just see even just in the captains. West Stanley just has a lot of size on the field. The Bulldogs have a lot of speed. It's going to be kind of a matchup. I'm interested personally to see the matchup between Albemarle's offense and West Stanley's defense. I believe uh, West Stanley in the, pre, in the uh, preseason publication that we had in the newspaper that uh, we talked a little bit about. They talked about changing the way that they want to run their defense, basically trying to move instead of trying to push people to the outside, trying to corral, no pun intended, with their mascot to the inside of the field. Albemarle will kick to start this game and move right to left across your television screens. Kick to start the game. Colts 0-1 on the season. The Colts have won three, the last three in a row. Albemarle has dominated the series overall. This is the 41st, not 51st. I got the second numeral right, but not the first one. The 41st matchup historically between West Stanley and Albemarle. Of course, West Stanley, the reigning and defending Stanley Cup champions. Number 45 will be kicking off for Albemarle. That's Moses Carbajal. And Jaquan Ingram is deep, along with number 24, Hunter Stoker. Bulldogs will be number 45. To return this foot to this return this opening kickoff. Meaning that Albemarle will get the football to start the second half. You heard West Stanley. They want to get take control of this game early. That is important to them. We are ready to go. Here we go. Matchup number 41, Albemarle West Stanley. Let's roll. Going to be a short kickoff taken, 15, 20, 25. And Stoker, wow, is he hit hard at the 30-yard line and just stood up. They're going to give him forward progress to the 31. And that's going to be a first down for West Stanley. The starting quarterback, of course, number 12, Bailey Baker, was a uh, JV quarterback last year and the backup for Cameron Brown. Yes. 
And the Colts will take over first and 10 at the 31. Colts starting off on the 31 yard line. Starting a freshman running back, Jordan Poole, six foot tall, 190 pounds. And Baker, the quarterback, is a junior, six foot tall, 155. First and 10, going to throw. Looks over the middle. He's got a man open and is incomplete. Single coverage on the play. By the Bulldogs, by number 16. Stoker was the pass intended for, and he was covered well. Second and 10. So West Stanley going for the home run early. And the ball was actually right there, right on the money. But it was also well covered on the play. It was, I think, single coverage, basically. There was some safety help coming at the last second. Now working quickly, second down. Straight up the middle goes number five, Lucas Scott. He's got a real power running back. You're going to see him run a lot between the tackles. They're going to give him about... I'll give him about seven yards, and it'll bring up third It'll down up and a long, long three. three. Ball sitting at about the 38. And West Stanley working without a huddle. And they're going to give it to the freshman, and he cuts right into the teeth of the defense. And he is stopped. On 26 down. and number 53 for Albemarle. 26 is Eli Back. McCall, 53, Bulldogs. Brian Davis. It's going to be about fourth and two on the 40-yard line. And... Poole gets maybe a yard. And West Stanley looks like they're going to go for it. So they are going for it on fourth down. Early in this first quarter, no score on the Colts' first possession of the game. And they got him with a hard count, and that's going to be a first down. We got a flag on the play. When you're talking about two teams that have a lot of youth on both sides of the football, penalties becomes become a very important factor. And those kind of penalties you'll see, of course, more early in the season as opposed to later. Four wide receivers this time. Poole is in the backfield for Baker. Baker's going to throw a little short pass and is incomplete looking for Lucas Scott. A little uh, cut pad into the far sideline and is going to bring up second down. Bailey 0 for 2 to start this game. And you're going to see West Stanley try to run a lot of those little short passes to try to control the tempo of this game and try to keep Albemarle's defense spread out. Three wide receivers this time on second down. Poole's going to get the carry. He's got a nice lead block in front of him. Trying to get to the corner. 45 and down to the 49th. But give number 70, Eli Lee, a lot of credit for a lead block that time. A gain of five. It'll bring up third down and five. Lee is six foot two, 270 pounds, and he kind of sealed his block on the uh, right side of the line, and it allowed Poole to get a, find a little room to the near sideline. Now another third down, third down and five. And the Colts working quickly. Baker's going to throw, and it is deflected at the line. It's going to be incomplete. Looking for Scott once again, and it'll bring up fourth down. It's going to be fourth and five. And this will be a punting situation for West Stanley. Got to come out, and the Bulldogs hold them on third down. So the Oak Tree defense holds West Stanley on third down and forces a punt. Noah Whittle will be the punter. And number eight, Marquez Crump, the speedy Marquez Crump, I should say, standing at about the Bulldog 25. Only about 10 yards back instead of the usual 15. Tries a little rugby punt. Does finally get the punt away, and it's going to be taken. Oh, it's picked up by West Stanley at the 32. West Stanley's number 25, I believe. I don't, I'll have to check on the number there. By West Stanley. But it was, he basically it's going to go as like a fumbled catch, and, and West Stanley will keep the football. Unusual play to say the very least. So West Stanley keeps the ball. First and 10, 9.48 left opening quarter. 
on an unusual Australian rules football looking kind of punt. Baker now pressure up the middle, now gets away from it, flings it towards the end zone, touchdown West Stanley Colts. He had number 24 Hunter Stoker behind the defense for the touchdown. Crump was back on the play and on with King Medley and it just a perfect pass just floated it right over the head for a 32 yard touchdown. So with nine minutes and 41 seconds left in this opening quarter, the Colts strike first. Aldo Cruz with a point after the kick is up, and it's good. 9.41 left, opening quarter, West Stanley 7, Albemarle nothing. So West Stanley strikes first with a scoring drive, and now Cruz end over end kick high kick going to be taken at the 15 yard line backing up 20 25 trying to find a little room on the inside still on his feet is crump and he's out of bounds around the 34. by marquez crump he pulled on ball at about the 35 yard so line. crump up to the 34 yard line sort of a short sort of a pooch kick if you will well, the bulldogs will take over at the 30 make it the 35 yard line first and 10. So a fumble and a turnover, and turnovers are one of the things that both coaches in their in our pregame show talked about as something obviously to be avoided. And the first turnover turns into instant points for West Stanley. Wide receivers to either side now. Manarian Hall is in the backfield as quarterback. Going to give the ball to number 21, Isaiah Hamilton. And Hamilton is hit immediately by Lucas Scott leading the charge along with 21 and 40. That's Christian Layton and 40 is Colton Hatley. Correction, number 21, Isaiah. Isaiah Harrison will lose six, five, make it five yards back to the 30. That'll bring up second down and 15. Good penetration on the left side of the line. Albemarle will go split backs this time on second down. Going to fake that. He will give. So a nice run that time by Albemarle off the right side. Number 30, Makai Hall. Makai Hall with the... Uh and he will get the, the lost yardage back, plus one. To the 36 for the and it'll bring up third down now and nine. Third and nine for Albemarle. Hall was two of seven through the air last, last game against Thomasville. Let's see if he goes to the air on this play. Two wide receivers to the near side of the field. He is going to throw a little swing pass way over the head, incomplete, looking for Hall. And that will bring up fourth down. For number 30, Makai Hall. That will be incomplete. And the Bulldogs will have to punt. So Albemarle takes the field and makes up for the yards they lost on the first play, but only got a one total yard and will have to cut, kick this one away. Now, number 16, King Medley. We'll be punt we'll punt, for the, we'll punt for the Bulldogs, and nobody is back for West Stanley. They have ten men on, well, nine on the line. They have everybody on the line. There is no returner back whatsoever. And the ball gets loose, and it won't matter who recovered it because it'll be West Stanley ball anyway. So a bad snap. West Stanley will receive. The 31-yard line of the Bulldogs. So a loss of five yards, but more importantly, clock changes now, the possession changes, excuse me, with eight minutes and 11 seconds left. Opening quarter in West Anley with golden field position at the 32. Going to swing to the near side, complete to Stoker. Stoker across the 27 down around the 26. Give him about five. We'll bring up second down in five. King Medley. Give him four on the play. It'll bring up second down and six. About second and six. This West Stanley offense suffered a major injury last week when they lost Logan Wahlberg with a, with a broke, a fracture in his arm. 
So the pressure is going to be more on Stoker. And number 14, Daniel Hansen, to try to step up to make for that. Now Jaquan Ingram gets his first carry of the game, and he's going absolutely nowhere. Brandon Christian and number 26, Eli McCall, lead, led the charge that time. Loss of two on the play. It'll bring up third and long, third and about eight. Jaquan Ingram is a little is is got a little bigger than he was last year. It's lists him at six foot one eighty. He looks uh, a little bigger than that to me, and uh, he's become more of a very powerful runner. But West Stanley has really found a, ter a, a terrific gem in this young running back, Jordan Poole. Third and seven, now Baker, and that one is knocked down on the play, and that's what Brandon Christian can give you with his athleticism Passes on that defensive line. It'll be fourth down. So fourth and goal, and I, I don't see why West Stanley wouldn't try to, well, they may try a field goal here. This is going to be a very long field goal attempt. Aldo Cruz puts his puts the tee down just right at the 35, so this is a 45-yard field goal attempt. 45-yard field goal attempt for West Stanley. This will be a 45-yard attempt. Aldo Cruz has a terrific leg, but this is going to take... And to use a baseball term, a mighty wallop. Kick is blocked. The kick is blocked. Click is blocked right on the line by 55, I believe, Adrian Little. Big time stop for the Bulldogs. I think Adrian Little was the player that came in and blocked it. The ball is going to be marked at around the 33. I had number 55, Adrian Little. Blocking that particular. The field goal was blocked by the Bulldogs. So with six minutes and 49 seconds left, Bulldog ball. the Bulldogs will take over first and 10 at their own 33. Little motion this time. It's going to be a jet sweep. Ooh, bobbled the snap, but he kept it. Now trying to get around, and he'll get a couple of yards. Nice play by Jaquan Ingram to trip up number 15, Micah Edwards. A gain of, they're going to give up two on the play to bring up second down and eight. Clock second running, 622 left. Opening quarter, West Stanley, seven. Albemarle on their, nothing. Albemarle on their second offensive possession of the game. Three and out on their first one. West Stanley, of course, their first possession kept alive by a punt fumble. Now Hall trying to throw. Lucas Scott is right on top of him and gets him for the sack. And if he didn't get him, number 40, Colton Hatley, was right there as well. Ooh, and a loss of about 12 yards on the play all the way back to the 23-yard line. Makes it third down at about 20. They've got to get to the 43-yard line. Clock running now five and a half left in this opening quarter. So third and long. Hall's going to throw. Got a little pressure off the right side. Now trying to get rid of it and does. And it is well out of out of bounds incomplete. That'll bring up for David Swearingen, I believe number, number four was sort of in the vicinity of it. But I think... You'd rather have, a, if you're going to incomplete a pass, you'd rather have it safely un, out of bounds like that as opposed to throwing into coverage. And it's going to be another punt situation in King Medley. And West Stanley, again, no return man deep. The first punt attempt was a bad snap. A little slower this time. He does get the punt away. He takes a West Stanley bounce and will be down by Albemarle at the West 47. We'll take a quick time out. I'll be right back on Stanley County Monday Night Football. Back on Stanley County Monday Night Football. First and 10 for the Colts. And 
Ingram gets the, the carry. Excuse me for that. Just pause there for just a second. Gain of about six will bring up second down and four. Little toss sweep this time to Poole. Poole cuts up the middle. Brandon Christian finds him around the 36, but that's going to be very close and should be a first down. It'll be first and ten for West Hamlin. Three wide receivers once again this time. West Stanley working very quickly. Pool to the right side and Jaquan Ingram. In the slot is number 81, Timothy Ward. And now West kind of taking their time on this particular play. Gonna throw. Looking all the way, he's got a man wide open and it's just over the head of number 81, Timothy Ward. Ward was lined up in the outside wide receiver position and he got behind the defense. And I bring up second down and 10. Baker now two of seven for 36 yards. Lucas Scott straight up the middle and puts the shoulders down and just pulls over several Bulldog defenders down to the 27, a determined nine yard run for Lucas Scott. Scott really making an impact on both sides of the ball right now. They're gonna mark him at around the 27, so make it nine yards, it'll be third down and one. Working quickly now, I formation, and now Poole will step back. Scott, two carries, 16 yards. Early in this game, seven carries, 31 yards for West Stanley. And Scott, again, straight up the middle. Nothing, nothing fancy about that. Vanilla, but straightforward and very effective for the first down. Just outside the red zone at the Albemarle 21 with Three minutes exactly to go in this first quarter. Colts leading seven to nothing and looking for more. They had a 45 yard field goal attempt blocked. And I, we first, and now we have whistles. And I don't know if we have a water break or some sort of equipment problem. Just an official's timeout and we'll be ready to go again. West Stanley's offense looking very good early in this football game. And doing a good job of also keeping Albemarle's offense off the field. Baker down with a quick throw, complete, 15-10. He's got a first down inside the 10, down to the seven. Good job for, good catch by number 14, Daniel Hansen. They're gonna mark it at the nine yard line. And it's first and goal now for the Colts. Scott will come in and Lucas Scott will now line up as a wide receiver in the slot to the near side on first and goal. Looking for, no, he's looking that, the other way for, and it's going to be incomplete. Two Bulldogs right on top of him. King Medley with a terrific play to kind of knock the football away. And it'll bring up second and goal. And he was open momentarily, but that window of opportunity to get the football to him closed very quickly. Second and goal now from the nine. Baker near sideline looking for Poole and he fell down. He's going to get a few yards out of the completion and it's going to set up third and goal at the six. Poole just lost his feet a little bit. I'm not sure he had much more room to make the catch anyway because he had two defenders right in that particular area. Now third and goal. Going to give to Lucas Scott. Scott straight through. He is in for a touchdown. West Stanley Colts. 
But we have a penalty marker down first before that play. Holding against West Stanley, so the, pen, the touchdown will not stand. And they will mark it from the five back to the 15 yard line. That'll be a 10 yard penalty. It'll take it back to the 15. It's funny, you think of you think of those as 10 yard penalties, but technically because they're spot fouls now, it, it adds whatever that wherever the spot of the infraction was, it adds another 10 yards to it. So it turns up to be like a 15 yard penalty. It'll be third and goal now for West from the 15, from an eye formation. Three wide receivers got single coverage on the far side. They're going to toss sweep to Poole. Poole bobbled it momentarily. He's not going anywhere. Three or more, another three or four Bulldogs. But there, there may be. That might be against Albemarle. I'm not a hundred percent sure. But I thought it might be. It, oh, it's another hold against West Stanley. No, this will be. And this will be cancel. Uh, this will be uh, declined by Albemarle unless they decide. Oh, they're going to enforce it. No, they will decline. Well, they're, West is backing up like they're going to enforce it, but now we're waiting to see the determination. Right now, the ball is marked at the was the loss of on the play was to the twenty. And now we're, we're waiting to see exactly if Albemarle will take. No, they will not take the penalty. So it was declined. And it'll be fourth and goal from the 20. And not going for a field goal. Instead, going to fling one into the end zone. Baker rolls to his right. Waits, waits, throws. Just short of his intended target. And the Bulldogs hold. Was looking for Stoker on the near side. And he was... He was open, but it was the throw came up just a little short and was just maybe slightly low as well. So with a minute and 23 seconds left. Let's hear it for that Bulldog defense. So the Oak Tree defense holds once again, and that's twice in this game. Albemarle has kept West Stanley from scoring. One was a block kick, and one was right there. From, it was a first and goal situation at the nine, and it ended up fourth and goal from the 20. Now the Bulldogs, two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. Going to give it to Harrison. Harrison got a nice lead block. Oh, and a nice stiff arm. Oh, and he got past Ingram across the 30, down to the 33. A determined run by Isaiah. Oh, and a, and a very late flag comes in. The ball is marked at the 33, but it's going to be a personal foul against Albemarle. So we're, let's see what the effect of this penalty will be. It's a 15-yard penalty, but I'm I'm one. It was he did he didn't whistle it as a dead ball foul. So it's going to be from, it's just going to be from the spot foul, and they'll play it first down again. So he will mark the football all the way back to the 18. I think it might have been a late hit coming in or a late block. I did not see it and what happened. Clock running now with a minute 17 left in this opening quarter. Split backs again for Albemarle. Hall going to give it to number 26, Elijah McCall. Straight up the middle. Look at this. 35, 40, across the 40, and down to the 42. Eli McCall, a big run for, out to the 41, a 23-yard gain this time. And we are under a minute now, and the Bulldogs, that's their first first down of this contest. The, uh, Logan McDonald is to the far side of the field. Micah Edwards to the near side in terms of wide receivers. Hall will give to Harrison. 
just didn't get a good push that time, but a nice job to sort of twist and get a couple of yards. Christian Osorio on the stop for West Stanley. And give him a gain of about two to bring up second down and eight. And Albemarle does not have to run another play if they do not wish to. And they are not going to. So we have reached the end of the first quarter with your score, West Stanley 7, Albemarle nothing. We'll be back on Stanley County Monday Night Football. Football, Charles Curcio alongside Brian Carter of Carter Video Services. We're having a few technical difficulties at the moment, but we will try to get Brian back on the air. Here's a run straight up the middle. And Isaiah Harrison into West Territory to the 46. So a couple of big runs that time on the or on, uh, on this drive in particular. And it's first and ten now from the West 46. Now Fakeson had no one to turn to, then just took off, and he's still going. They're trying to swipe at the ball is Noah Whittle, but Hall does a wonderful job of keeping the ball tucked in tight. Tough run by number 10, Menorian Hall for the Bulldogs. It's an eight-yard run. It brings up second down and second two. And two. It almost looked, if you, if you can imagine, it almost looked like he was running the old uh, single wing where you, you catch the ball and spin around. That's exactly what it looked like, too. Sh shades of Coach Toby Webb and all that film that we watched recently at the, uh, and I watched recently at the presentation they had by the Stanley County Historical Society. Now straight up the middle, first down. And, whoa, he just runs over a Colt. That time Noah Whittle stopped him, but he, but he paid the price for it. Harrison. Dogs, number 21, Isaiah Harrison. Down to the 31, and it's another first down. And after dodging a couple of bullets That's defensively, the, Bulldog. first down. the Bulldogs have a chance right here to maybe tie this football game. Three wide receivers once again. They have uh, David Swearingen sort of lined up as a tight end, almost looks like. All going to give to Harrison. Nice lead block once again across the 30, down to the 27. For the Bulldogs. Tough running by the Bulldogs tonight. Number 77 with a great block. Oh, Nick Smith. I was looking at the wrong roster. My bad. Number 77, Nick Smith with a great block. I was trying to give credit for those guys up front. And, and offensive linemen, of course, obviously just never get enough credit for what they do on a football field. But he, he really opened up that run right there. Second down and seven now. Little fake. Now McCall. Eli stays, oh, stays on his feet. Spins away a couple of missed tackles. And the Bulldogs are inside the red zone. All the way down to the line that will be a 10 yard Bulldog. gain first down a 10 yard gain and a first down and Albemarle is putting together a, a very impressive drive here and controlling the tempo which is something I know that coach Davis has talked about wanting to do this season they will line up at the 17 yard line sort of an offset formation if you will And now the give is to Jaden Chambers. Chambers. And Chambers straight up the middle. He's going to score. A touchdown. Albemarle Bulldog. What a wonderful block by the offensive line. Just open that up on the left side. An 18-yard touchdown run. 18-yard scores. And the Bulldogs are an extra point away from tying this football game. Point after by number 45. 
that kick is up, and that kick is good. And we are tied with 8.58 left in the opening quarter. We'll be back on Stanley County Monday Night Football. So with 8.58 left in the first half, Al Marlin and West Stanley are tied 7-7. It wouldn't be a broadcast if we didn't have some technical difficulties. Brian Carter, welcome oh, yeah. back to the Definitely. broadcast. There he there is. There's the silky smooth sounds. And now Lucas Scott with All some right. beautiful moves down to the 43-yard line. And you know, when you think of Lucas, Lucas Scott, Scott Brian, you don't think of having those kind of moves. He he has the athleticism, well, but he, he's, he's more of a you know a Zonka type runner. He, he's he's more of a power a runner. Play that Sunday night. Go to bed early. You got school Monday morning. Got yeah, school starting Monday for all you kids out there. And amazing that we're actually school hasn't started yet, and we're in the second week of the regular season. Really, second week, second week. Glad to be here. It's a beautiful night. Good night for football. Poole now will get the give. He's got a, a Lucas. Oh, what a block behind it. Jaquan Ingram just blew somebody up. Poole still on his feet. Holy mackerel. He absolutely leveled someone in a great jersey. I didn't even see. It, it, was, it was a crackback block, I believe. Great run. Oh, I didn't. I, I, I don't know if it was a crackback or not. I was just, someone up here said it might have been a crackback block, but you never know. No harm. But no it was a, an impressive play nonetheless, and the, the gain is down to the Albemarle 42. Straight up the middle is Scott once again. Oh, oh just bowling over defenders oh, great across run. the 30. Great run by Scott. Mark that down to the 28-yard line, and I think we have a timeout. West Stanley will take one as well. We'll be back on Stanley County Monday Night Football. First and 10 for West Stanley at the Albemarle. 28, really good first half of football. Poole now trying to find some room on the left side. Boy, what a patient run that was, Brian. Down to the 18 for another first down. Yeah, definitely hit 56 in on the tackle. Tackle for the Bulldogs. Brandon Number Smith. Julius Smith. And Julius Smith, I believe, was in there as well. Down to the 17. Give him 11 and give him a first down and back in the red zone once again. Yeah, the West Stanley Band sound good tonight. Definitely. Both bands have been impressive so far in this game. Now off the right side, Poole is trying to spin. And I think it was David Swearingen that sort of led that one. A loss of two on the play, bring up second and 12 from the 19. Straight up the middle once again. Who will get down to the 15. Yeah, they're really giving him a workout tonight. We're in there on the tackle for your Bulldogs. And this is a spot that we saw earlier in the game, Brian, where, where Albemarle's defense kind of hunkered down and, and came up with some stops. And they did that last week, of course, against Thomasville. Oh, yeah, the oak tree is back. So the Oak Tree defense once again being asked to be, make another stop here on inside the red zone. Third and eight. Four wide receivers this time. Baker going to try to swing it to the outside. I believe it's going to be complete, but it's going to be well short to Timothy Ward. It's complete, but it's going to be short. Yeah. They'll mark it. Uh, hey, he really didn't get much of a game. Maybe a couple. Maybe a yard or, or two. Pushed out of bounds by number 30, Makai Hall. 
and a good coverage sack, or coverage sack, coverage play. And now Aldo Cruz is going to attempt from the 20, a 30-yard field goal. First, the first field goal attempt, of course, was blocked. Snaps a little high. Kick is clean. It is up. I think he may have hooked it to the left. He did. Okay. And the Bulldogs hold him again. So we will take a quick break and be back on Stanley County Monday Night Football. It's going to be Bulldog ball. We're back in Stanley County Monday Night Football. Charles Curcio alongside Brian Carter. Glad to be here with you, Charles. The give was that time to Jaden Chambers. And Chambers off the right side. Yeah, that was a powerful run. Picked up about six yards. Dragon defenders with him. It'll be about second and four. So they'll give him six, brings up second down and four. And 6-13 left in the second quarter. Split backs this time. Oh, what a hit coming in the very end. I think Lucas Scott may have delivered it. Osorio was in there as well. Yeah. Chambers just stopped. His momentum just got stopped immediately. They're going to make it third down and maybe about a yard and a half. It's about third and two for the Bulldogs. Albemarle being very patient in this game, Brian. Do you see how they're trying to control the tempo? Oh, yeah, very methodical. And Wes Stanley is, is obviously speeding it up more with their no huddle offense. Wes Stanley got a, off to a tremendous start. Harrison straight up the middle, just nothing. They might have the first down. It's going to be... Very close. He leaned forward. You know what? His shoulder was was past the 30. Where they marked the foot... Where that mark is, it looks, that's going to be a first down, I believe. Run for the Bulldogs. Number and he will, the mark, and he will just mark that. Go ahead as a first down. Bulldog. First down. Clock running 5.07 remaining op uh, opening first half here. 7-7. Seven, seven. We are tied. Good game. Good game. Really solid football game by both sides. Hall now will give it on the jet sweep to Julius Smith. Julius and Smith tries to pivot. He's going to get a couple of yards. Finally, we'll go down around the 23, maybe the 24. It's going to be second and six for the Bulldogs. And Albemarle has got just a, a plethora of running backs. They just have so many different weapons that they can go to offensively. Using my favorite word, plethora. Plethora, yes. Thank you. Have to get that in every so often. Now we'll give to Chambers, but he is hit initially uh -huh, rubbed up by number and finished up Jesse Fur. by Fur. Handoff was to Jaden Chambers. And Chambers is actually going to lose about six yards back to the 28. That turns it into third down and 12 now with 342 left in the first half. Fast West Stanley has called one timeout. Albemarle has all three of theirs still. Four wide receivers, three to the far side of the field. All taking his time. Now they, the play clock is running very short. And I think he's going to, uh, he ran, he took game. too much time. Yep. Back in and when you when you yards. are at a game where there is no play play clock, of course, Brian, you watch the back judge, and when he starts counting like he's like it's uh, like a basketball referee counting a three second violation in the lane, when he counts those last ones out, that means that the play clock is down because he's keeping track of that. Now much longer. 
Hall over the middle, oh, complete. Nice. Oh, bounces off one tackle. He's going to make the first down. What a determined play by David Swearingen. I know, finally brought down by Nick Medlin, the 19 in the Colts. That's a big time bulldog. First down. First down. He jumped the gun just a little bit, Brian. Yeah. He was he faked you out just a little bit on that one, but he nonetheless the announcer. <laughs> good B announcer with a Cleveland Brown shirt on. You you got you gotta you gotta, you gotta love, love that. Unless you're a Bengals fan, I or Steelers fan, I would suppose. True. First and ten now with the split backs. It's gonna be it's gonna run. Harrison off the left side. He's got a, another first down. Run by number 21, Isaiah Harrison. Yeah. 55 and 71 with beautiful blocks. Little Adrian Little and Johnny Owens. That's going yeah. to be Azurio, 27 on the, on the tackle. Bulldog. It's very close. It's going to be. I think we may get a measurement here. That looks like a first down to me. While we have just a second for the measurement, Brian, let me give you just a few stats. Albemarle was in negative yardage in the opening quarter in running yards. But now, 19 carries, 89 yards as a team for Albemarle. Oh, came back with Isaiah the Harrison and Eli McCall each have 33 yards care, uh, rushing. Ooh, Menard boy, that is close. That, that is, is really very, close. That's, I, I'm zoomed in on it, Charles. It's, it's, I don't think. Yeah, it's, it's second it's in, in inches. In, inches, I think. Second in about three and a half it's inches, possibly. In Not much more. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's about second in a centimeter, yes. Brown have 89 rushing yards on 19 attempts so far. Missed it by that much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Siegfried, you missed it by that much. Thank you. Yes. The four, you're surrounded by the fourth cavalry. I mean the third cavalry. I mean two Boy Scouts on roller skates. Let's see, what do we do here? So to bring up second down and one at basically the 47 and three quarters. Mm -hmm. Clock is running, 225 left. Uh, excuse me, that's uh, oh. McCall. He's got the first down. Had to make a couple of moves to do it. Yeah, he was on the score down for a loss. He dodged, he dodged one flying tackler. Clock stop with 2.16 left. Albemarle may have to try to take a shot down the field. And now Lucas Scott is coming off the field, Brian, if you can see on the far side yeah. with his helmet off. And... He looks like he may be in a bit of distress. Yeah, shaking up a bit. Yeah, he looked like he might have been. Oh, he's on the ground. He's on the ground. First and 10 now for Albemarle at the West. 46 clock running, 210 left in the first half. Fakes the jet sweep, now gives up the middle. Harrison will go down at the 41, a gain of five. It'll bring up second down right and five. To number 21, Isaiah Harrison. But Tempest Fugit, Brian. Yeah, Hunter Stoker stopped him. Tempest Fugit, no? <laughs> time flies, and time Albemarle flies, yeah. may have just called timeout. When the clock is stopped now with 146. The clock is – no, the clock is running, excuse me. And they do have three timeouts. They have all, a full complement of timeouts. It may have to start trying to use some of those. Almost oh, definitely. Marquez Crump to the far side as a wide receiver. Fakes to give, now going to throw. Throws it up for him. He is open, but it's just a little out of bounds. He had single coverage. It was intended for Logan McDonald, and Hunter Stoker was right there with him. So the clock will stop. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, the clock will stop with a minute 13 left on the incomplete pass. But Albemarle can go over the middle if they want to just because they have their full complement of timeouts left. Yeah, there's no hurry. Seven, seven tie here late in the first half. Two and five for the Bulldogs. Two backs, two wide receivers. Going to fake, go play action again, and this time he gets, oh, and oh, he kind of throws the ball out of bounds, and that's going to be an intentional grounding, I'm sure. That was the weirdest pass of well, oh, That was a very strange, <laughs> well, well, it, it passes is, or, is, 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 a, it is a generous term, I think, for it, Brian, if you'll forgive, the, yeah. forgive me for that, but he was sacked at the 48, and now the penalty will just mark it back a little further. And it will be loss of down as well. 
and it will be fourth down. Fourth and five. I don't know if the penalty was declined or not. So the flag was waved off, so there is no penalty on no the play. Penalty on the play. Oh, no penalty. Okay. So it, it just becomes fourth down. And I think now Coach Morton is asking for a um, an explanation on that determination because if it was a, a, a grounding penalty, it would be fourth down anyway. But it would be 10 yards back. And now referee coming over to Coach Davis to explain to him as well. And he was just asking. And now Albemarle will take a timeout. We as well with a minute 10 left in the first half. Timeout Bulldogs. So with a minute 10 left here in the opening half, tied 7-7. Albemarle punting the football away. They've had one bad snap on a punt. Did get the other punt away. This snap was a, a very slow snap, if you will, but it's a good punt. Takes a big bounce for Albemarle. Go out of bounds around the 11. It's going to go out of bounds at the 11-yard line. And that's where the West Ellen Colts will take over. Well, actually, they're going to be standing at the nine-yard line, so they're actually going to put it inside that's all the way that down 10. That's nine-yard wow, line. Great kick. With one minute left in the first half. In the so if, if, if nothing else, Brian, being able to possess the football for five minutes in this fourth quarter They've got and be able to control the field, of posi field position they got on the keeps West line. Stanley deep, yeah. They didn't get points out of it, but it, that you know that's when that's the kind of game that Albemarle wants to play. They want that sort of possession kind of game. We're down to exactly one minute. West Stanley has two timeouts remaining, I believe, and will go four wide. They might want to play it safe. From the old run and shoot offense. Baker steps back, steps to his, now he'll roll. Now he's just going to run out of bounds, 15, and down around the 17, maybe 18-yard line. Please don't hit the photographer down there. He's working for the Stanley News and Press. <laughs> Earl Bradshaw did a great job last week, of course, and he's shooting this game as well. He'll mark the ball at the 18, so make it second down and about one. Clock stop, 52.3 seconds left. Pretty fantastic sports photos in the uh, sports section if you ever read the Stanley News and Press, which he, everyone we had a We had a photo page of the Battle of the Bulldogs last week, and that was Earl Bradshaw's photos, and just some tremendous images from that game. And I'm not being partial because it was our newspaper, but yeah, I thought he did. Very and we're going to get a measurement. Brian, that might have been even be a first down. Well, let's check it. All right, and number four, we'll, yeah, first down. Oh, they'll mark it. It's a first down. Yep, they'll move the chains. So they'll call it a first down at the 18-yard line. 23 carries, 99 net yards for Albemarle, while West Stanley has 16 carries and 85 yards. But through the air, West is 5 of 12 for 53 yards with one with one touchdown. And they're probably going to have to go to the air here. They still have two timeouts left, so they can throw over the middle. Instead, Poole straight up the middle. He's got some room. He's trying to spin out of the way. And he's going to run up short, and they're going to have to call timeout, and they will. And Julia Smith in on the tackle. We have a timeout for West Stanley. We'll take a quick timeout and be back on Stanley County Monday Night Football. Again, Penn. 43.4 seconds exactly left in the first half, tied 7-7. Let's see how aggressively the Colts will play this. Baker looking to throw over the middle, and it is complete to pull for a first down at around the 36. They had Poole lined up in the slot, Brian, and just he was wide open. Was made by number 16. Clock will stop with 37.4 seconds to move the chains. 37.4 left in the first half. Three wide receivers to the far side of the field. There's only two backs out there. Baker tries to step up. Oh, now he is trouble. in trouble. Now does get rid of the football. No. Complete 45, 40. Look out. He could go. It's Lucas Scott. It's a foot race, and he is gone. Touchdown, wow. West Stanley Colts. 65 yards, and Baker made that happen. Partly just by being able to step up, Brian, and just buy himself some time. Yeah. Great job, Mr. Scott. And it... it 
he just bought enough time to, for for Lucas Scott to get open. What a terrific wow. play. And with 17.7 seconds left in this half. So instead of going into the locker room tied, potentially West Stanley could go in with the lead. Now a fumble on the snap, but the ball has just been, and that's going to be not even an attempt. So 17.7 left. West Stanley 13. Albemarle 7 will be back. Stop the extra point. So a 65-yard touchdown pass from Bailey Baker to Lucas Scott. And we have a 13-7 game with 17.7 seconds left heading into halftime. Yeah, it's just unfortunate they missed the extra point. Well, it, it, it is, for, uh, for West Stanley, it, it could potentially come back to haunt you. We have seen, we've seen that, time we've seen time that happen again. more than once in 16 years of broadcast, no doubt about it. Short kick going to be taken at the 25. It's Marquez Crump, though, 30, Marquez, 35, 40. Still on his feet, still going, and down to the 45 with 7.6 seconds left. He was trying to get to the get out of bounds. 7.6 seconds left. Well, not only was he trying to get out of bounds, Brian, I think he was also just trying to, to see if he could actually break one, yeah, break, break one break free. Tackle. Only 7.6 left, really not time for maybe, you could throw maybe one short pass to the sideline. But, I mean, they can throw anywhere they yeah, want to. They have, they have the Hail Mary, timeouts, yeah. but, you know, do you throw the Hail Mary now or do you try to get yourself just that little bit closer? Just it might be worth it to try time. a draw play, Brian, just to kind of see if you can catch. Catch him all. Well, oh, he's going to throw. And he will go down at the 40. Ooh, he almost lost the football. And that's going to be the final play of the first half. That's the end of the first half. West so we have West reached halftime here at Albemarle Football Stadium. What an epic first half this has been. West Stanley took the lead. Albemarle came back to tie it. And then the Colts with just under 20 seconds left in this first half take the lead back. We'll be back on Stanley County Monday Night Football. What am I going to learn? The degree provides a broad background in simulation and game development with practical applications in creative arts, visual arts, audio video technology, creative writing, modeling, design, programming, and management. Students will receive hands-on training in design, 3D modeling, and programming for the purpose of creating simulations and games. What are my career choices? This degree prepares individuals for employment opportunities as designers, artists, animators, testers, programmers, quality assurance analysts, engineers, and administrators in the entertainment industry, healthcare, education, and government organizations. Why Stanley Community College? Here at Stanley Community College, we feel that college is not the ultimate destination. It's a place of discovery that equips you with knowledge and skills to journey on to a rewarding, successful future. Call us today to schedule a campus tour or visit us online at stanley.edu to learn more. At Stanley Community College, we are changing lives. We're back on Stanley County, Monday Night Football. Charles Curcio, Stanley News Press, alongside Brian Carter, Carter Video Services. And we are here just getting ready for the second half as Albemarle hosting West Stanley. A terrific first half, Brian. Yeah, coming back with a lot, little Tom Sawyer by Rush. Thank you. Kitties out there that don't know who Rush is. Very nicely identified. Mm -hmm. Shazam, he's not, but he's still pretty good. I've seen him seven times. Nice. Mm -hmm. 11 first downs for West Stanley, eight for Albemarle, rushing 17, 101, net rushing, 17 carries, 92 net yards. For Albemarle, 24 rushes, 93 net yards. Through the air, though, has been the difference. 127 passing yards for West, 7 of 14, while Albemarle, 1 of 4 for 20. Penalties have been uh, have not been many. Uh, West Stanley, one penalty, 10 yards. Albemarle, three penalties for 25 yards. And we have had, uh, Albemarle has lost two fumbles. 
even though the second one was basically on a fourth down play. Uh, the, the one fumble on the initial punt led to West's first touchdown. Time of possession, just about even really. 10-14 for West Stanley and 13-46 for Albemarle. One of six on third down is West Stanley. Two of five for Albemarle. Isaiah Harrison, 47 yards on nine carries, leads Albemarle. And on Jordan Poole, 41 net yards, nine carries, leads West. And that is your statistical breakdown of the first half. What do you expect from the ben, second half, break. Brian? <laughs> I expect for West Stanley to come back, come back very strong here. Trying to make up the – I hope that extra point that they missed doesn't come back to bite them. End over end kick going to be taken at about the 10 yard line again, and now it tries to change fields, but just ran into a, a wall around the 25. So another short kick to the 25. Not much. West Stanley has actually done a fairly good job of keeping Albemarle's return game sort of stymied, if you will. Definitely kept him in check. Two in the backfield once again. It's going to be Harrison. He cuts now. It's a misdirection to the other side, but he does not get past West Stanley's defense. Noah Whittle led the charge that time, Brian. And did you see the penetration by the right. defensive line? I mean, Jesse Furrow, 78. He got in there with a nice hit. Absolutely. You can call his name a lot tonight. We absolutely have. No question about that. Any candidates for uh, player of the week yet? Oh, I think we definitely have several um, that are fighting for that. Mm -hmm. Going to make it a loss of about maybe two yards on the play. It'll bring up second down and 12 from the 23. Going to be a straight give to Harrison. He gets a nice lead block, but he, somebody did not pick up Lucas Scott. Speaking of Player of the Week candidates. Oh, he's definitely in the running. He's for right for efforts on both sides of the yeah. football, no question. And he, they'll give him back to the 25. The original line of scrimmage that will bring up third and 10. Yeah, no gain. Albemarle cannot afford, though, Brian, to have any negative yardage runs. They need to be able to get three and four yards in a cloud of no dust, dust kind of yes. thing and sort of <laughs> control the tempo. You know, they can't get in a hurry to get back into the game. It's uh, only 13-7. A lot of ball game to play here. Absolutely. And now Hall will give straight up the middle. I think he's got a first down a whole lot more. 35, and finally will get stopped around the 38. Huge run for the Bulldogs. Number 34, Number 34 Jalukas Hyatt. Jalukas Hyatt. Wow. Nice run. Takes it for a Bulldog. Yeah, finally, finally brought it down by Mr. Nick Medlin. I and I'll tell you what, this, this, again, what we've said, that's about the fourth or fifth, I don't know, it could even be the sixth, that's, you know, different person carry the football for Albemarle. That's what they're going to do. They have just so many terrific athletes that can carry the football. Carry the mail, as old Jamie Ward used to say. Yeah. Now up the middle this time, McCall spins. You know, sometimes, Brian, when you see a run go right up the middle like that, and you see a back try to sort of spin out of the way, I, I feel like it just... You know, that's one of those times when you have to be more of a power runner, put your shoulders down and try to push the pile if you've run out of room. If you spin, you might be able to get free, you know, but when you're in that much traffic, oh, yeah. you've got to find a way to sort of muscle your way through. But again, it was a positive gain, two yards, so that's what Albemarle needs. Two yards needs. is better than no yards. Absolutely. A little motion this time. And the step goes through the legs of Hall, and Hall is just going to fall on it at the 29, a loss of 11 yards on the bad snap. Mm. It just sort of skipped off the turf like a low ground ball. Yeah, like a grounder. And they'll mark a 10-yard loss. They'll actually put it at the 30. So it'll bring up third and long, now third and 19. Clock continuing to run, 8.40 remaining in the third. 
Now Micah Edwards will line up. He was on the near side, now lines up to the far side. All back to throw. No, no blitz on, and the mm. pass is incomplete. And that's one of those times, Brian, that if you're on third down, and I, I've always agreed with, with uh, John, John Madden on this particular item, if you're on a third down, you need to throw a pass that's long enough. Even if it's 19 yards, you need to throw a pass that's long enough to get closer to the first down. Yeah, that wasn't you know, easy. You, you, you don't want to <laughs> just throw close. You can throw it short and try to get the first down, but it's always easier, I think, to throw one for the first down. Right, down the field. So nonetheless, it'll be a punting situation. King Medley. And now Jaquan Ingram standing at the west 40-yard line. Now a late sub, Logan McDonald, comes on the field. I think that Admiral only had 10 men. And now they are inside. They've got to snap this one immediately, and they do. West again with a lot of pressure. But this time Ingram is, takes a look at it. Oh, he gets away from it. That is extremely dangerous. <laughs> no, it almost did him. A decent punt down to the 38, and it takes a, a decent West bounce. Takes over on the 38-yard line for West Stanley. Yeah, I mean, excuse me for Almar with eight minutes, 11 seconds left. Yeah. This West Colts Stanley take pretty over. good uh, field position. It does give them good field position, as, but it, it always scares me, Brian, when you see returners like that getting within that kind of zone of the football when yeah. they don't really have a, a, you know, just don't really have a clean shot at returning it. Mm. Now we'll see how quickly West Stanley wants to work. Well, if they do anything like in the uh, first half, first quarter. They were definitely, uh, definitely working quickly. Uh, and now a hard count. Three for the Bulldogs to the start. Well, actually, it's going to be encroachment, I believe. I don't think they called it. They think they called it against Albemarle. Yep. Yeah, if they, you said it was 53, Brian Davis. So it'll bring a first down and five. That's only the second penalty of this game. Yeah, relatively Against Albemarle, that's only the second penalty for 15 yards. Straight up the middle and good penetration that time by King Medley, David Swearingen, and Brandon Christian as Poole had nowhere to go. And just ran to a wall of bulldogs. A host of bulldogs on the stop. As the, the PA says, a host. A host of bulldogs, <laughs> indeed. A plethora of bulldogs as a yes, word that yes, got yes. a few quizzical looks from the press box, to mm. say the least. Mm. Wait till wait wait till somebody gets folded like a piece of origami. Oh, that's another thing. You, that's another catchphrase. We can't, we can't take that. Uh, I get paid by the catchphrase. I don't get paid by the catchphrase. We can't take no. credit for that. That's a big play race. No, that's big play race. That was mm. absolutely. Pool off the right oh, side. Got, got a room. big hole. First down. Julius. Uh, Julius Smith. Yeah, Julius Smith made the, the stop and Tackle. saved a saved a longer gain into Bulldog territory. They'll mark it at the 46. Uh, I'm sorry. Make that the at the Albemarle 46. I may have said West Stanley. It's a 12-yard gain, and it is a first down. 7.21 left. Colts leading 13-7. Bull again on the zone read. Just absolutely nowhere to go. Stopped by a host of Bulldogs. 54, Davis Moose, I believe. And maybe even 55. Let's see, Jordan Poole. Adrian, excuse me, Zach Bryan and 55, Adrian Little. Four, Zach. Jordan Poole was a little slow Adrian getting up. Little stop for the Bulldogs. Well, he, he there's, a, there's probably a reason for that, Brian. I mean. Well, they've worked him pretty hard tonight. They, they worked that, yeah, I mean, definitely, no question. Fakes the throw down. It will throw complete first down and more. Hunter Stoker once again. Stoker down to the 32, 15 yards, and another first down. About a 15-yard pickup for West Stanley. They're not in round. Oh, a bad exchange. And a bad play on the exchange that time. Almost like they look like we're trying to run an option, Brian. Mm -hmm. Just didn't quite work. 
loss of four on the play brings up second down and six. Or se excuse me, second down and 14. Thinking the, in the wrong direction. Now West Stanley is taking their time. Taking a lot of time. Toss sweep this time to Poole. Poole cuts up the middle and has got some room and still on his feet. And if he still can get it, still going, he might go. He's got some blockers in front of him, his speed, and he is gone. Wow. Touchdown, West Stanley Colts. 36-yard touchdown run for Jordan Poole and a very patient run too, Brian. He's making a definite play for player of the week. West Stanley goes up two possessions now with five minutes and 27 seconds left. Let's see if West Stanley goes for two, and that is how they're lining up. I think that's a good decision. After um, having a problem with the snap, and West Stanley might take a timeout just to try to think, and they will they'll take a timeout, and we will take one as well and be right back. West Stanley takes a timeout. So West Stanley going for two points here to try to make it a two touchdown game again, a 14 point game. From the I formation this time, Poole is the halfback. And it will be pulling. Oh, he goes absolutely nowhere. nowhere. Big time Brandon Christian. Dogs, number 11, Brandon Christian yeah. sacks him up. And the two so we will take a break. 19 7, West Stanley over Albemarle here on Stanley County, Monday Night Football. So Jordan Poole scores from 35 yards out, but the two-point conversion failed, and we're at 19 to seven. Advantage Colts. 5.27 left. Another high end over end short kick. Crump, I believe, has it at the 20. He's got blockers in front of him. Got, got both two very beautiful blocks nearly down to the 37. And oh, he is still down, and now this is not could not be a good sign. We'll see if he gets up. Uh, I think he's okay. He is he's he's okay. okay, good. Because that is one player that, they could, that, that they don't. Albemarle can ill afford to lose for this season. So he's going to take a breather. Down, so it'll be the 37 yard line. will take over at the 37, first and 10. Again, taking their time. Julius, excuse me, no, it's uh, McCall, and McCall tries to change fields, and he's got a chance, and changes fields again, and down at the 44. Wow. He, he ran about a great run. He ran about 30 yards to run seven yards. <laughs> Razzle dazzle. And honestly, Brian, he was about one or two blocks away from breaking a big loose, one. Yeah, definitely. You just get the feeling Second after a while. The Bulldogs. You, you just get the feeling, Brian, that uh, just eventually one of those runs could just really bust loose for Albemarle. And change the whole complexion. And change the complexion of this game, absolutely. Second in about maybe a long three. It's going to be Harrison off the left side. The lead block was just not there this time, and Harrison is going to lose a lot of yardage. 21 for West Stanley. Christian Layton really led the charge there. Yeah, along with Noah Whittle, number 15. We have a flag on the field. And we have a penalty marker down. The, the ball will be spotted at the 30, we'll say about the 35, so a loss of about nine, but let's see what the penalty is. Holding against Albemarle. So, I, I, West Stanley is making every indication they will decline this penalty. And it will be declined. They'll mark the ball at the 30, make it the 34-yard line. <laughs> 
and it makes it third down and about 13. You know, from where he was initially hit, Brian, I thought that he, he actually may have been about, you know, three or four yards further upfield than when where that ball was actually spotted. That's true. Hall's going to throw a little play action. Going for all single coverage down this way, and it's going to be picked off at the 36 by Hunter Stoker. Hunter Stoker. And Stoker oh. thrown down. Ooh, that looks like that could and be that was a not going hit. to And it's not going to be a flag. But the, the second pass is intercepted by West Stanley and over 24, Hunter Stoker. Stoker at the 36, and then he got thrown out of bounds right at the midfield stripe. Some happy coaches over there. So the possession change will happen with three minutes and 46 seconds left with the Colts in the, the third 50 yard line with the Colts the football and in the driver's seat at the moment Stop your play here. All right, good delay game. On the play. So West Stanley, yeah, well, they backed up five for delay a game. West Stanley got it back about five yards. And Brian, we may have jinxed everybody in this game when we said that uh, that there were a few, there were not a many few, penalties in the never. first half. Starting to. Uh, pop well, they're not up a mounting bit. yet, but yeah, they just had a few in this third quarter. First and 15 now for the Colts at their own 45-yard line. Going to be a fake this time, and Baker's going to keep it around the right side. 50, 45. Elijah McCall makes the uh, – Eli, Eli McCall, excuse me. Yeah, makes the like tackle at three. the Bulldog, what, 46, 44? Let's see, about the 36. That's going to be at the 43-yard line. So it brings up second down and about three. Baker going to go for it. He's got a man down there, and it is complete. Go. No, it is not. Oh, he had it right yeah. in his mitts. Pass is broken up by number 16, King Medley. Oh, Daniel Hanson. I bet he's uh, – wish he had that one back. But King Medley did a, did a good job of breaking that particular mm -hmm. one up. Now it's going to be third down and three. Clock stopped with 3.06 left. Third and three. Yeah, might have called them off. Encroachment. And they may have drawn them off again. And if it's encroachment, that will be a first down. Offsides on the Bulldogs. That will result in a West Stanley first down. That's twice they've done this in this game. Sweep to pool this time. Nice. And that Good time job. does not get anywhere. Nice play. I think that might have been Cameron Hamilton. Nice tackle for the Bulldogs by number six, Cameron Hamilton. Oh, you're correct. Maybe a gain of about a yard. Brings up second down and nine. Time not a factor necessarily yet, but it, it's starting to become that way rapidly. Now it's 233. You wonder if how aggressively West will play this particular drive from this part of the field. Going to throw, and it is picked off, and that could be a pick six if he keeps going. No, great play oh, by Jordan Poole. Poole might have saved the touchdown. I didn't see the number of the interceptor. Mm. Might have been number 30, Makai Hall, but I can't. That's right, that's right, Makai Hall. So that's what, they're going, that's what we're going to say. So Makai Hall makes a critical, critical interception. That's what Armand needed right at this point. 
Two minutes, 25 Lots seconds ball left. Ball at the 40. Lots of ball play. Four yard line. Well, Brian, that also changes, it flips the, the field position and it stops West Stanley from going up possibly three possessions. Now it's still a two possession game. Harrison now will go off the left side. Spin move, beautiful. He's got down about nine yards, gonna be second down and short. Section about to the 48 yard line. It's gonna be second down and one. Now oh, into Colt territory. So after that run, Harrison up to 47 yards on 13 carries. For it as a team, Albemarle 32 carries, 105 yards, only 3.3 yards per carry. But three and four yards will move the chains. McCall this time runs into Still one on tackle and one broken tackle. And now he will go in the down in the arms of Stoker. Oh, a little yeah. shot afterwards yeah, for pushing and shoving. Uh, and I think we're, he's going to only lose about a yard as his forward yeah, progress he lost the yard on the play. will be marked at the 49. So that'll bring up third down and maybe a two yards. Clock continuing to run. No, clock has stopped, excuse me. And now we'll run with a minute 13 left in the third. Yeah, so this quarter winding down. Split formation to either side. And now hands it off to Harrison, and Harrison did not make it. Seems like 78 Jesse Furr, he's in on every tackle. He really does. Furr has he's, been he's on a part of on, the tackle. Or, you know, it's definitely short. They're, they're already marking of, of putting up fist in the air for fourth down. So an interesting time, mm -hmm. an interesting decision here. What do you do? I think they're going to try to go for it. They're going to go for it. Fourth down and, and a good, solid yard. Fourth and a yard for the Bulldogs. And Let's they will go for it. A bold decision here for Albemarle. Clock will wind late in this seconds. third quarter. And he's got it. And he's got the first down. And more. Isaiah Harrison. Harrison with the conversion. The Bulldog. First down. 45, the clock will stop with 24 seconds exactly left in the third. <laughs> clock running short, they're gonna have to hurry. Seven, yeah. six, five, four. And now they got actually Albemarle. This is going to be interesting. Two West Stanley players jumped, but it drew off the number 43 for Albemarle, Brendan McDonald. Yeah, let's trade that. And down. I believe it's going to. We're waiting for the determination. 1.6 seconds now. They're having a discussion. So it is going to be a false start against Albemarle. That'll be a five-yard penalty. Even though, you know, it, it, it could be argued, Brian, that, that West Stanley, that West Stanley yeah. drew him off. And we have one And they're going to wind it, left. and that's going to be the end of the third. That's the end of the third quarter. We have reached the end of the third quarter here at Albemarle with the score. West Stanley 19, Albemarle 7. We'll be back on Stanley County Monday Night Football. Brian Carter's favorite bumper music of all yes, time. The theme to coach <laughs> as we start the fourth quarter on Stanley County Monday Night Football with West Stanley leading Albemarle 19 to 7 with the Bulldogs facing first and 15 at midfield. And this
this time, we may have offsides against West Stanley. So, so you can negate the five yards that Albemarle just just had. And, and right we'll back. start this, this, this set of downs all over again. Now it's against Albemarle. Oh, it's against Albemarle. Excuse me. Oh, oh I'm interesting. I, I thought. I assume. Um, that was West. So instead of. So instead of first and 10, it's now first and 20. Go over some stats in just a minute. Got the 10 yards, got the original yardage back. Back to the line of scrimmage for number 21, Isaiah Harrison. Well, actually, he only got about five yards to bring up second down and 15. Correction, that's a five-yard pickup. I faked out. I think I just faked out everybody myself here in the, <laughs> in the thing when I said that. So looking at some third-quarter stats, Isaiah Harrison, 51 net yards on 15 carries. As a team, Albemarle, 35 carries, 108 yards. For West Stanley, 24 carries still, 148 yards. Through the air, West 8 of 16 for 142, but now has an interception. Hall going to fake play action. Avoids one tackler, trying to get out of trouble, and will just throw this one far out of bounds. He is outside the tackle, so it doesn't matter. I don't even know if that really matters, honestly. Uh, the closest receiver was the West Stanley fans over there. I didn't see a flag. Has a flag been thrown? Mm. He has. Yes. It is intentional grounding. And it'll be loss of down as well. Intentional grounding is the call. Wow. Penalties mount, starting to mount up on uh, the Bulldogs. The ball will be marked to the Albemarle 40. It's, five yards it's, a, the it's a loss of down. It is a five-yard penalty from the actual point of the infraction, if you will. Now third and 25. The Bulldogs have to get down to the West 35. Hall's going to throw, puts it up in the air, and just shot it right over the head of Josh Smith. And it should Stoker. be a punt situation. Hunter Stoker, 24, had a shot at it. Nineteen to seven, West Stanley ahead with two possessions, uh, at least one and a two point possessions with two conversions. That is with a twelve point lead. And the it's not two full possessions, as it were. Bulldogs have punt this one away. Snap is good, and West Stanley plays back a little bit on this one, and it's a nice punt over the entire West Stanley coverage and takes a big Albemarle bounce and will roll down to the 18-yard line. A nice job oh, by King job. Medley. Good job. Nice. Ten punt minutes, 43 Medley. seconds left the down to the 18 -yard line. in regulation. And the PA announcer agrees with you. Nice punt. <laughs> And the Colts will take over first down. So through three quarters as well, West Stanley, 290 yards offensively, getting 7.3 yards per carry on 40 offensive plays. Penalties, two penalties, 15 against West Stanley. Albemarle now up to six penalties and 40 yards. Baker is the lone back, but it's going to be straight up the middle to Lucas Scott, and Scott could be gone. 40, wow. 45, 50, and he is caught from behind, saving a touchdown. That was number uh, 20, Julius Smith. Julius Smith saves a touchdown. Smith on the stop for the Bulldogs. But Lucas Scott just changed the field position immediately on the first play. A 42-yard scamper straight up the middle. So Scott now has 79 yards on only six carries. 
along with being a real factor on defense as well. I formation this time. It's going to be a toss to Poole. Poole cuts up the middle. 40, nice. still on its feet, <laughs> down to the 37. Three Jake more yards. Bought three extra yards with that play, most definitely. They're working him hard tonight. He is, he is, he is definitely been a feature for West Stanley. Gain of six, so to bring up second down and four. Poole now, that's his 15th carry for, excuse me, 15 carries, 95 yards. Mm. He's working on breaking that century, Mark. Very close to it. Jaquan Ingram gets to give straight up the middle, and he's got a first down, down to the 32. Market at the 33 actually <laughs> give the Colts a first down. Clock will run now. It stopped at the moment with 9:24 left in the third in this fourth quarter. Excuse me. And the uh, Elmo fans are pretty quiet. And Wes Stanley is suddenly going to slow the pace a little bit and taking their time offensively. I formation this time. Going to toss it to Poole. Poole gets past one. Abbas had a second one. And will go down around the 30, get three yards, and bring up second down and seven. And West Stanley in no hurry at this point after going no huddle most of the game, Brian. I mean, it's still going no huddle, but not going immediately. Oh, yeah, just taking their time. We will have a post-game show where we will give our Player of the Week award out as well as talk to the winning head coach. Mm -hmm. And we'd like to thank uh, Stanley Community College for allowing us to broadcast this program to you. Absolutely. Ingram this time will get a toss sweep, and he tries to cut up the middle. He's going to be a, maybe a yard or two short of the first down marker. Put him around the 20. Five, maybe, maybe even inside that. I know we have a holding against West Stanley, so that whole run is going to come back. So 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Spot of the foul is the 31. So this will move the ball back to the Albemarle 41. We have a penalty on the play. And it'll bring up second down and 18. Second and 18. Clock is now running, 6-12 left. Baker spins out of the way. He's got him in wide open. Wide open. And he is gone for the touchdown. He West could, Stanley Colts. He could have walked in. Hunter the Stoker and Baker just faked everybody out because I had already looked. For, yeah, I didn't know where the ball was at the moment. Faked me out. He faked me out and he had. Touchdown for West Stanley, number 20. Wow, Stoker, Stoker was just as wide open as a wide receiver can get. 41 yard touchdown. I mean, that was executed perfectly. We may have to have co-players of the game. Yeah. Eight minutes exactly on the clock. West Dix looks like they're going to try to go for two again. Not had an easy time with conversions in this game, Brian. Yeah, this hasn't uh, really worked for him. Let's see if it'll work this time. And it. Uh, Lucas ooh, I think Scott, I don't. I don't think so. No, he did not make yeah, it. I was, I was right on top of it, Charles, and he he did not break the plane. So we'll take a timeout. Twenty-five to seven. West Stanley leads Albemarle with eight minutes left in the fourth on Stanley County. Monday night football. If I can have your attention, please. We're back on Stanley County Monday night football. Bailey Baker, two touchdown passes in this game, and both of them to Hunter Stoker. Yeah, the good tandem team. The kickoff, high short kick, again, right at around the 20-yard line. Mark, Marquez Crump, 30, 35. Was received by Marquez Crump. He cut to the, the inside, line. and will again, go down around the 39. The number. 
799-4677. Please report to the press box. And Brian, I thought he had a little room to the outside. I don't think he did. He could have broke away. Yeah. He might have been able to break away had he been able to get ahead of steam on the outside of that kickoff return. So Albemarle, 7 minutes, 53 seconds left, trailing 18 points in this game. That's a lot of ground to make up in a short amount of time. Hall's going to throw, and he's got it. It's going to be picked off by Jaquan Ingram. Ingram had him covered the entire way and will get the interception. Oh, and he's down. He may be cramping. Cramp, yeah. So the clock will stop with 7.45 left in this contest. Well, they, uh, we have our Split the Pot winner, and he donated it back to the Albemarle volleyball team. Thank you to our Split the Pot winner. Yeah, we're check on Ingram. And still, uh, still down with what it looks like uh, just cramp. Mm. In need of some Gatorade. But this is a a big shift now. On Ingram is a with, player on the field with West Stanley leading by 18 points. Albemarle needing three scores. Tried to play it a little aggressively and just just didn't get the result they wanted. Really, he was covered all the way, and Ingram became the receiver. Brian just trying to look back and get the make the play. And nice interception. All right, we'll take a quick timeout, and we'll be right back on Stanley County Monday Night Football. We're back on Stanley County Monday Night Football. Only gone just a couple of minutes, and uh, Brian, it looks like he was just having cramps. Yeah, he seems to be doing fine now. It's a ill afford a, another player that West Stanley can ill afford to lose. Jaquan, an important player on both sides of the field. Yeah, you just take a breather for a while and get back in the game. Ball is resting at the 30-yard line. Straight up the middle this time is Lucas Scott for about five Double yards to bring up second down and five. Yeah, they're definitely going to try to milk that clock. And does uh, the Bulldogs have their full complement of timeouts? They do, and they would maybe calling them at some point here. Mm. Scott, once again, got a nice lead block this time. Get about maybe three yards. That'll bring up third and short, third and about two. This would be the, should this result remain, Brian, this would be the first head coaching win for Brett Morton. Mm. It would bring the Colts up to one and one, and it would drop the Bulldogs down to one and one. I'm saying Eli McCall. Number 26, he was a little slow getting up. And another penalty Fans, on a hard tomorrow, count. There will be a car wash to support the Albemarle Youth League. That hard count has worked several times in this Auto. game for West Stanley. Please come out to support the Albemarle Youth Football League. So it'll be first and down, first and ten now from the 43. West buys another set of downs, which just allows them, Brian, to run at least two to three more minutes off this clock. Yeah. Approximately. Scott straight up the middle. Yeah, he's 50, still on 40, his feet. Five. Oh, the ball is loose. Come on the play. It's picked up by the Bulldogs. Picked up on the 35-yard line Medley. by King he's Medley, and Medley Medley goes out of bounds at the 47. And he's out of bounds. Oh, we, got, we got a fight. And a fight. Yeah. And we have some pushing multiple, and shoving going flags. on. Another flag. Oh, they're gonna they need to break this up. Tempers starting yeah. to flare there, no doubt about it. Oh, the head coach for West play. Stanley, he's, he's, he's pretty upset. And he's walking onto the field. Oh, he's hot. 
Now, Coach Davis is also trying to get his players off the field, and he is none the happier about that as well. Personal foul against Albemarle. That penalty is 15 yards on the Bulldogs. Trying to resume play here. So he returned the ball to the West Stanley 47. But the penalty for a personal foul will push the ball backwards to the th about the th looks like the th 37. <laughs> Make it the Albemarle, excuse me, the Albemarle 38. And it'll be first and 10. And, a, and some late contact out of, you know, there, was, there was some contact that was very close on that sideline and then somebody from Albemarle obviously must have reacted and they like we always say Brian they always catch the second person they never catch the first one hardly that's it Albemarle had two or three players make a move and a penalty false the start and that's going to back the Bulldogs up another five the Bulldogs back them up five yards so where the Bulldogs had a very strong, very solid first half, this second half has been a little bit of a struggle for Albemarle. Penalties are mounting up on them. Backup quarterback is in, incomplete. That was number 17. That was Crafton number Mansfield. 17, Crafton Mansfield. On the pass attempt. They'll bring up second down and 15. Clock stop with 6.22 left. Albemarle needs something and they need something in a hurry. If West Stanley, if this result holds, this will be the fourth straight West Stanley victory that includes three on the field wins and one forfeited win. Albemarle has not beaten, uh, would, would not have beaten West on the field since I think 2013 sounds right. And we have another flag. Harrison, the ball carrier, gets about five. Let's see what the, this penalty is about. It's probably holding against Almo. They have a flag down. Nope. It's going to be illegal procedure against oh. Albemarle. It's going to be illegal procedure on Albemarle. So this will be marked from the original line of scrimmage at the 38 back to the 33. And it should make it second. I take that back, excuse me. <laughs> they will mark this one down at the 27 from the 32. It makes it second down and 21. Gonna be Jaden Chambers straight up the middle. Oh, oh almost just broke almost it. broke away. Oh, and he's down. Oh, he's holding his leg as well. You're absolutely right, Brian. This may not be a crane. Jaden Chambers on the run. And he is in obvious distress. And we're gonna get a timeout. And Brian, let's take a timeout as well. And we'll be back on Stanley County, Monday Night Football. Chambers, he's up. So Jaden Chambers is the injured player and he's coming off under his own power, but very uh, obviously very gingerly, um, as you said, Brian. Oh, he's, he's going to make it. Oh. I, he, um, I think he's, he's trying to walk it off, but uh, something is obviously really bad and he's pulling at that right ankle and maybe like the almost looks like the Achilles or the calf. Mm. You know, that lower leg, like a r lower part of the right leg. It's third down now at about 14. 
Mansfield's going to roll, and he's in trouble. Flings it towards the middle, and it is through the hands. Oh, it would have been a first down, too. Yeah. Maybe just a little behind Brandon Christian, who had found his way open. Mansfield with the pass, almost completed to Brandon Christian. Mm. And there's a penalty marker down as well. Let's no, wait and see. The Do we have a late hit on the, on the quarterback? Is what I'm curious about. That may be what it is. Let's see if it's a personal foul. Personal foul, roughing the passer yes. against West Stanley. Right first down. Penalties on West Stanley, roughing the passer. So let's see what this does. We'll put the ball at the 47 or 48, rather, and it will be a first down. So the Bulldogs now have first and 10 at the 48 with 542 left. West Stanley has scored 18 unanswered points to this point. Mansfield's going to throw again, and it is over the middle. It is picked off at the 30-yard line. Oh, oh what a That's hit. a flag. That's got That's to a be flag. a high tackle. Yes. Man, he's trying to take his head off. For West Stanley. Number 19, Nick the Medlin right with the interception, and he took a wallop. That was a dangerous hit. It really was. It looked like he, he ran right up under his helmet. Just like clotheslined him. So that'll move the ball to about the 33-yard line and should give... With five minutes, 33 seconds left, should give West Stanley the ball back deep in Albemarle territory. Oh, they... No. Uh, they moved... The, wait a second. Well, yeah, yeah. They called the penalty against... Against West Stanley? The penalty was against West Stanley? Oh. Oh, so they called a block at the back, a not a personal foul. On mm. West Stanley. Interesting call. So that straight up the middle, just absolutely no room there. A plethora of bulldogs on He's the using our word. Now plethora. someone has just stolen my word now. I'll tell you what right now. Now listen. <laughs> I yeah, I did appreciate it. I was asked if I appreciate it very much, and I did. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Imitation being the sincerest form of flattery, flattery, of course. I didn't see the ball carrier on that particular play. I believe it might have been Jaquan Ingram. A loss of one and bring up second down at about 11. Ingram once again for a couple. And the clock continues to run with 4.50. Number 30, Makai Hall on the stop for the Bulldogs. Hall on the stop, but now West Stanley really in the driver's seat. West Stanley's offense has been solid in this football game. Baker, 9 of 17 for 183 passing yards, three touchdowns, one interception. And number 11, Jordan Poole, 16 carries, 98 yards, and one rushing touchdown. And, of course, three passing touchdowns for Baker, two of them. Two, number 24, Hunter Stoker. Now, this pass is complete on the outside to 14, Daniel Hansen. And the Colts are in no hurry whatsoever. Well, it's going to be fourth down, and there was only a gain of about maybe a yard anyway. Yeah. So it'll be another punting situation. But right now, the, the clock is the enemy of Albemarle mm -hmm. in terms of this football game. Noah Whittle will punt the football away, and Marquez Crump standing. Uh, now he's backing up around the Albemarle 30. Trying to take as much time as they can. And now another rugby punt. And a nice cut. It was going to be a nice spiral. Going to be taken at the 21 by Crump. 25, 30. Oh, he fumbled the football, and West has it. Oh, he just had it stripped right out of his hands. Bad break for the Bulldogs. And 
Marquez Crumpy's uh <laughs> And it and it was a sort of that it was that rugby style punt, if you will. I didn't see the West Stanley player that recovered it, but the Col Colts will keep the football. Three minutes, thirteen seconds left, and they and are can run down just about all of the clock, just about all of this football game. Ingram now off the left side. Oh, he's fumbled the football, and Albemarle's recovered. Fumble recovered by the Bulldogs. Number 55 on the recovery. Number 55, Adrian Little on the recovery. So we're just going to go back and forth here. Basically. Three minutes, eight seconds. First and 10 now at the 26 yard line. Fakes it now, it's going to give the nope, option, and now game. the ball is down again. And do we have another return? Another turnover? Yes, yes, we do, and it was recovered by number 81, Timothy Ward. Wow, this is getting crazy, Charles. So it was a fumble on the pitch, basically. A loss of four back to the, so we got at the Albemarle 21. Recovered by West. Two minutes, 53 seconds. West Stanley football with 2.53 left in the game. And West Stanley can salt, just about salt this one away. Number 21 is in for West Stanley. Christian Layton lined up as a running back. And he'll get the carry straight up the middle. They're probably saying just hold on to the ball. Just hold on just to the football. On, this is where everyone's it. asking anyone too. for West. Is probably. Just hold on to the ball. Exactly. And he'll get six to bring up second down at about four. And Clark is at 241. Don't forget, folks, post-game show coming up. Don't go anywhere. And please don't forget to check us out. Like us on Facebook at Stanley County Monday Night Football. We have a page. We'll start putting up some more pictures and links to our games on YouTube and different kinds of things as well. Monday nights, channel 21, 7 o'clock. On time. Work, excuse me, Spectrum. Spectrum. <laughs> it's going to take a while to get used yeah, to still, that. Still not quite used to that yet. Mm. Layton maybe gets a, maybe another yard. down to the two minute mark. I don't think West will be able to run out the entire length, uh, entirety of the clock should they not get a first down. Should they get a first down, it's over they with. will. You wonder though if they may even try to kick a field goal on fourth down. They're using up every bit of the clock they can. They certainly are. We're at 130 now. 21 once again, straight ahead. He's going to lean forward, and he may have it. It's very close. Hmm. It's very close. I can't. I wonder if they can brand the stick. I can't tell. No, it's going to. It's going to be marked short. I believe. It's going to be short by a yard. So West Stanley going for it. That one. And we're just under a minute. Just to go into taking contest. as much time as they can, and maybe just another give to uh, to 21, Layton. Layton straight up the middle, and he's going to get down to around the seven, and that will stop the clock to move the chains, but only momentarily. So he's got the first down, and this, this ball game is basically in the books. Yeah. West Stanley only needs to take one knee, and, it's all sure. and this game will be over, and we will get to our postgame show. 
I'm sure we'll be talking to an elated head coach. Absolutely, getting his first clock is running. All he has to do is take one knee, and this ball game will be over. Twenty-five to seven. West Stanley has come into Albemarle and won this football game and kept their active win streak alive with the Bulldogs. We have reached the end of this football game. Your final score, West Stanley 25, Albemarle 7. We'll be back for the postgame show. He's Brian Carter. I'm Charles Curcio. And this is Stanley County Monday Night Football. Thank you for your support of your team. Drive safe this evening. We will see you next 7.30. We're here on the postgame show on Stanley County Monday Night Football, and we decided to have four players as our co-players of the week. First, Bailey Baker, 10 of 18, 184 yards, three touchdowns. Talk a little bit about your efforts tonight. Well, our receivers, when the space wasn't there, they did good, find a space. Offensive line gave me plenty of time. It was just a team effort. And a couple of those plays, I thought you were able to buy yourself a little extra time to throw, and that offensive line also did that good job trying to give you the, the time to throw. Well, they sent a lot of blitzes, and our offensive line did real good picking it up, giving me holes that we're going through. I mean, couldn't do without them. And, of course, then Hunter Stoker, you caught two of those passes. Talk a little bit about your touchdown catches. I just tried to find open space when Baylor was rolling out, and, you know, coaches called the right place at the right time. So. But that second but the second one was, you know, you were just absolutely as wide open as a wide receiver can get. Uh, it was supposed to be a run play, but it was a bad snap with our offensive line had him off good. So, I mean, I saw the corner come up, and Baylor rolled out and got space. So I took off downfield. But that just shows, I think, the connection that the, the two of y'all have, the, the kind of you know, being able to read each other and, and kind of working on the fly. Yeah, we played we play with each other since we were little so I mean our, our connection there with me him and Lucas so I mean we felt space and we made it happen terrific and one of our other players that we come on in here Lucas Scott caught the other touchdown pass and just as I was talking to to Bailey just a second ago he you were able to buy a little space as well for yourself as he was getting extra time yeah well on the play it was uh, originally a bubble pass and then I rolled out and I saw the corners and it was just open space and I saw Bailey stay up in the backfield and roll out and uh, O-line gave him a lot of time which really helped I just stepped back and he threw it and I just like just made a good play on it. Talk about this team's defensive efforts tonight, holding out Marl to seven points. Uh, defense. Last week we had a bunch of injuries and like we didn't honestly we didn't know how the team would like stay up this week and we showed out and the people that came in they really did a good job. Uh, D line did really good and the DNs did extremely well tonight and then the backup linebackers came in and did well and then our secondary they also did really good at uh, holding down the receivers tonight. And included in that defense of course number 19 Nick Bedlin with an interception. Nick talk about this team's ability to sort of limit Albemarle's chances through the air. You know, Coach Toss said we're a team, and the team come out, we compete together, and everybody played their zone. And Coach told us the right plays at the right time. How important is it? You're a senior on this team. How important is, is, is this win to being able to, to start the county play with a win? Very important because it brings one step closer to the Stanley Cup. There you go, our players of the week. We'll be back on Stanley County Monday Night Football. Back on the postgame show on Stanley County Monday Night Football with West Stanley head coach Brett Morton. First, congratulations, coach, on your first coaching victory. Talk about what do you think some of the keys were tonight for the win for West. Being able to run the ball, we tackled better. Uh, we made some adjustments on defense that was able to kind of shut down what they did. Uh, credit to Albemarle, although they kept coming. I mean, there there was no quit there, so um, they're, they're going to be pretty good down the road. Um, so they'll be all right this season when they get in conference play and everything like that. Like that. I was impressed with the pass protection that Baker had a lot during this game. He was able to step up and just buy an extra second or two, and it found him open receivers. Yeah, we've worked on that some. We're still trying to fine-tune it. I'm coaching the offensive line, so if they're making mistakes, it's my fault. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I love O-line play. I was a, I was an offensive lineman, so we've been working that all week because we can throw the ball. We, we've got to find, a, you know, a little bit different package to throw out of. But other than that, I thought it was better than last week and a solid defensive effort, especially on the pass against Albemarle. Yeah, uh, we knew they were going to run the ball because um, I think that's what they hang their hat on, playing good defense and running the ball, which is a good recipe. So that was that enabled us to free some guys up. I got some guys that can cover. Jaquan, Hunter Stoker, we can bring Will Barbie in, he can cover. Uh, I was exceptionally proud of Nick Medlin. He played a great game. I thought Jaquan played a good game as well. And, uh, and Stoker, all those DBs enabled us to really help get after the run. 
You get a, a win to start county play. You continue county play next week at North. How Im- important is it to keep this going? Oh, it's very important. You always want to build on success. When you have success, you want to build on it, um, and you just want to keep your momentum going. Especially against a team like North, they you know they've been good now for several years in a row. So, you know, it, we're the underdogs next week. So we're going out there with that kind of chip on our shoulder. Congratulations on the win, Coach. Thank you. We'll be back on Stanley County Monday Night Football. So West Stanley wins 25-7 to over Albemarle. Before we get to the end of our broadcast, I want to let you know if you see my little orange thing. Brian, if you could get a little shot of this, my orange. It's for leukemia awareness. I have a three-and-a-half-year-old nephew, Tate Whitley, his team Tate, if you're looking online, who has leukemia, and we're all showing support by wearing our orange ribbons, and we have some T-shirts and other things. And just want to thank everybody for their support. There's a benefit, some benefits and other things coming up, and just wanted to thank the community so much for their efforts in helping us with my nephew. Now, what a game this was tonight. West Stanley came out, goes one is now 1-0 and in county play. Big win, game for them next week at North Stanley taking on on the comments. For my partner, Brian Carter, Carter Video Services, I'm Charles Curcio. We'll see you in the Stanley News and Press this weekend and see you on the field next week. Football is a 20th century technological struggle. And what I see was this whole raft of people a setting on these two banks and looking at one another across this pretty little green cow pasture. Football has hitting, clipping, spearing, blocking, punching, late hitting, unnecessary roughness, and personal foul.